Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss a pretty interesting topic, and that's on Tindry 137. I'll explain what that is in a bit. I basically go over this quote magic cubes calculator that I actually uh, developed. And before you get further, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link in the description below. And also, a uh, useful tip if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can play this video at a different speed. This video is going to be pretty in uh, extensive, so yeah, buckle up. So basically, Tindry 137 Magic Cubes Calculator. So Tindry 137 is the name of an online cryptic series of puzzles and riddles that some are saying is mathematical proof of aliens or advanced intelligence making contact with humans. You can learn more, more about it by watching the following video from The Outer Dark. It's a very interesting YouTuber and YouTube channel, so check it out. And these are one of the series of the Magic Cubes that I'm going to be looking at. And this is some interesting stuff here. So, five things we know about Tindry137 is the uh, title of the video. Hashtag Tindry137, hashtag first contact. Uh, hashtag Cicada3301, description states, Tindry137 puzzle. Uh, is the Tindry 137 puzzle evidence of the first contact with aliens? And Tindry 137, there seems to be a code in the Bible which references the fine structure constant within physics that also references pi. Hashtag Cicada 3301. That's uh, another cryptic uh, puzzle uh, series, I believe. So I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail explaining what Tindry 137 is, but I was very interested in some of the mathematical equate, you know, calculation that was brought up. Which uh, yeah, up which made quite fascinating biblical references. So check those out in the video. It's pretty interesting, and I might I might do a video later on. So I will look closer into those references to see what I can find out, and might be do a video later on. So there were uh, so in that uh, Tindry one through seven, there was some interesting mathematical cubes shown in um, yeah, in the Tindry one three seven documents. So Ed, who's the one who runs the Outer Dark, referenced another YouTuber, Defango, as stating that the cubes were perfect uh, magic cubes and they were likely made by advanced intelligent life forms, etc. So this is another video that he posted, Seven Reasons Why Tindry 137 is like nothing else. And he quotes this other YouTuber who says, there, were, there are so many, the magic cubes, they offer up the best evidence uh, for something extraordinary, extraordinary going on here, they are perfect cubes that add up in all directions to six, six, six in the pages, even the di in the diagonals. Before this, in 2003, there were about eight that were known to math that proven to exist. They uh, provide a use with eight more that we have not seen before and shown a complex understanding of math, etc. Goes on and on. So we interviewed uh, Defango, one of the key. Tindry 137 puzzle solvers about what is so special about Tindry 137 and he's saying those cubes are uh, very uh, special for some reason. So what is Tindry 137? Is it proof of alien life? So Ed references to Van Gogh saying that not only yeah, not only are the cubes magic, and I'll explain what magic cubes are in a bit, but are perfect as well and even claiming that only eight were known to exist in the world. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know where he's getting these claims from, but anyways, Ed asked me to check out some some of the calculations, some of the, namely the magic cubes in the Tindry 137 cryptic pages to see if they are, they are special in any way. So let's uh, go to the, those magic cubes. They're found in the, well, this is a, a wikia.com uh, page someone set up. So the Tindry 137 uh, cryptic documents are translated by researchers and are shown in this website. And I'm not going to go uh, uh, about where they were got them from, whatever. Just look at that earlier video and see uh, for yourself. But I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm going to uh, look in detail about the cubes in detail mainly. So here's a website, tindry137.wikia.com, and then go to the translation page because they put in some weird language, and then you have to translate them. And here's how it looks like: tindry137 translation page 001. There's 137. I don't know. Is that an <laughs> alien or something? So, and then the translations, the translates injuries, a source of important writings, etc. So let's go further, and then inside that page, here's some quotes that some commentators were making. So we have another coding and other additional ruins. Here are four magic cubes with some of 666 and all X, Y, and Z axis. We have here really, really unique cubes. The number 666 occurs in the Bible four times. All, all verses are shown here. Unbelievable. Such cubes are hard to calculate. Going on further, we learn how the magic cubes work, etc. So again, a key, so commentators were calling it 
magic cubes. So the cubes are shown here. Here's a link to this was page five. It's a image file, and you could see here. Here's some of those magic cubes, and I'll explain what they mean. So. Uh, people are saying that it adds up in the X and Y axis. That's what these commentators are saying. So if you add up these ones across, this equals to 666, which is in fact does add it this way, 666, and then add up down here in, th in through every single column. So 42, 64, that's 666, uh, etc. And uh, so these ones label it here, but the guy says you could do it. Uh, they says it's a perfect one, so you can go across here, uh, like it diagonally across and from here to here, or some other diagonal. And they're basically saying that all lines add up, but they don't actually all line up, so I don't know what he's talking about. So this was two cubes here, and these ones all add up 666, like as uh, explained above. And these ones, uh, there's, but, uh, yeah, there's some over here. So there's four 666 there, and there's some more here, here's four more, and these ones add up to 3301, and uh, I think some other values and I'll get to those in a bit. So first let's just learn just what a magic cube is. So if you go to Wikipedia magic cube, so in mathematics a magic cube is the three-dimensional equivalent of a magic square. I'm not going to explain that too much. So that is a number of integers arranged in a n by n by n pattern such that the sum of the numbers on the each row, column, each pillar, and the four main diagonals. And I'll explain this in a bit because uh, those Tindry uh, cubes don't actually have this, is equal to a single number, the so-called magic constant of the cube, denoted M3N uh, or something like that. So anyways, uh, going over to the Perfect Magic Cube Wikipedia page, and Perfect Magic Cube in mathematics, a Perfect Magic Cube is a magic cube in which not only the columns, rows, and pillars, and main space diagonals, I'll explain this in a bit, but also the cross-section diagonals sum up to the cube's magic constant. Perfect magic cubes of order one are trivial cubes. This is just everything. Everything is just number one. I'll, I'll illustrate this all in a bit. Cubes of order two or two to four can be proven not to exist. So perfect magic cubes of orders two to four. So all of the Tindry ones are three by three. These are all uh, three by three. So none of them can be perfect. They've actually been proven according to Wikipedia. Uh, by some other, they cite some other place, and they've been proven that cubic orders of two to four can be proven not to exist. So I don't know what that Defango guy is talking about. So there's there's none that's possible. And cubes of order five and six were first discovered by Walter Trump and Tr uh, Christian Boyer, etc. And there's some other ones, higher ones. I think eight and seven have been found. So basically, higher orders you can two to four there are none besides the trivial one which is everything is number one and I'll explain that in a bit later and also there's six classes of perfect or uh, of magic cubes every magic cube may be assigned to one of the six magic uh, cube glasses based on the cube characteristics the simplest one is this the minimum requirements for a magic cube are all rows columns pillars and four triagonals that, those are the uh, main uh, diagonals main um, yeah, cross-section diagonals or whatnot. I'll uh, illustrate that in a bit because Wikipedia doesn't do a good job of it. Uh, so must sum, sum up to the same value. A simple magic cube contains no magic squares or not enough to qualify for the next class. And there's a bunch of other classes. So there's six classes. The simplest one is this. I'm only going to look at this. So the smallest number uh, simple magic cube is order three. So the cubes that we have. So here's a, here's a great website, magic-squares.net. So check it out. This explains it much better than the Wikipedia page. <laughs> so yeah, Wikipedia is just there for references. Sometimes they show links that, uh, that you want. Sometimes they don't even have the links. But this is a cool website. So the triagonal, so minimum uh, requirements are rows, columns, and pillars, that is explained in the Chindri images above, and four triagonals. Let's look what a triagonal is from this website. Triagonal in this case is 24 plus 14 plus 4. See, that's across this in part of the cube to the center to here. So there's going to be four of them. Likewise, from here all the way to this and then to 26. From the 27, you would have to go here, 14, and then 1. 18 goes to 14, then all the way to 10. So as you can see, the triagonals are just cut through through the center, right across, right, right here, four, like that, just right across, but in the th center, think of it as a 3D image, etc. And there's the row, the column is here. No, that's purple. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's a column, that's a row, and a pillar is vertical, pillar is 11, 5, 6, like that. 
So yeah, hopefully you get the uh, picture like that. So what I did, I made an Excel sheet and you can view and download it in the video description below as well to see just what type of cube the Tindry cubes are. And what I did, I made some calculations. So let's just open this up. So here it is, I put it every single one of the cubes from the Tindry files. And you can see this is the, the first one, 63824, put them all in here. So the 63 goes to here, I mean 638 goes here, 24 goes here, 4 goes there, and likewise I wrote this whole square inside this. The middle square you have the 563, 922, 63, uh, 5, 13, etc. So 5, 6, 3, 9, 2, 2, 6, 3, 5, etc. So I did this for all three, followed the exact same pattern. So drawn from here all the way to here. Yeah, so just drawing this exact same pattern. And then what I did was I, these ones in yellow are calculations. So I summed up. So that's the sum from this, these uh, columns and rows are across here. And as you can see, the rows all add up to this one adds up these all up to 666 etc the pillars are if you look at the pillars calculation that's this one plus this plus this in other words if you look at the 638 actually I'll do better I'll look at the 9 one here this one's easier to, to draw so if you look at this one yeah this, so this one here the pillar 92631 so this is just adding up this and as you can see, the pillars add up to 666. But now the main cross-sectional diagonals, the four of them, going from 638 through the center 13, and through the center, then through the corner here, across like that 15, what you get, well, you, this one you get a 666. I believe that the Fango guy maybe saw that and it was 666, and he thought everything else was. But if you go here, across this one, 634, uh, 13 here, so 4, 13, 631. So you remove this and go across like that. Uh, the sum is actually 6, 4, 8. So it's not actually. So this is not a magic cube. Because this is the minimum requirement for a simple magic cube. Not a magic cube. So there's nothing particularly <laughs> magical about this. So the Defango guy and the people the, the commentating on the, the Chindri uh, 137 translations and that wiki, wiki page are not accurate. It's not a magic cube, but but note that the Tindri puzzle never stated it was a magic cube. If you read it, it just says these are some cubes, etc. And, and then people are saying it's some sort of magical cubes. So now if you go through every single one, not a single one is. Everything is 666 here, the pillars, columns, and rows. I'll make this uh, bold. Okay, so, uh, but none of these, none of these are magic cubes. Just keep going, 4, 9, none of these add up. None of these add up, and these are ones I just, again, I just threw all these inside here, exactly as is. Now you could double check if you want. And then these ones, the ones, uh, all those other four at the end, those weren't 666, those were, the first one's 3301. Again, none of these are magic cubes. Those don't add up. These ones are the 33301 cubes. Again, they're not magic. This one is, uh, bold this. Yeah, so anyways, this one's not magic. This one's add up to 3299, actually, so that's a different kind of cube. This one's, again, 3301, and the last one I looked at, well, this is all of them. This was a 1033, three, just 3301 backwards. But again, none of these are magic, magic cubes. So now let's go back to my document. So I copied and pasted here, and as you can see, none of these are magic cubes. Since the triagonals are the four uh, main cross-sectional diagonals, these are the same thing as writing triagonals, like this. Uh, these don't all add up to the magic constant 666, or the other one's 3301, then this cube, as well as all the other Tintree cubes, are not even magic, and much less perfect, or quote, perfect, as that Defango guy stated uh, in the uh, Outer Dark video. So to check if these videos are special or of higher intelligence, I looked up to see if I can replicate them, which I, in fact, did. First, I set up a linear algebra matrix, used an online Gauss-Jordan elimination calculator to solve the matrix, and then created a calculator uh, on Excel for it. And I'm not going to go over what these are in too much detail, but I, I, I will go through a little brief um, illustration of what I did in this matrix near the end of this video, so stay tuned for all that if you want, because it's pretty interesting stuff. And maybe later videos I'll go over what these mean. So here is the Tindry cube uh, made above, made from my calculator, which requires just eight free points to calculate the rest. 
And so basically, let's before I get to this uh, screenshot of my calculator, let's go to the linear algebra matrix. So if we go here in that same Excel sheet, so you go to matrix solver, and what I did, I made a giant matrix. Uh, this one I actually used the website here. I went this one matrix.rehash.com slash gauss jordan elimination.php. It's a cool website there. I'm going to move this. Yeah, just move these uh, over to the right. So, calculator used is this link there, matrix size 27 by 28. So, input matrix. So, yeah, I made a giant matrix like this. There's 27 calculations. And I'll explain what these, why I have 27 in a bit. And then I have a bunch of ones here, zeros, and then everything on the right is equal 666 and then the output solution is here so from this output solution and, and uh, yeah and I'll explain again near the end of this video if you want to stay tuned just to learn a bit more about how I did this so from this output solution so I went over here made this output solution these are the x1 all the way to uh, 27 so magic cube calculator that I made is pretty fascinating <laughs> so you have x1 x2 x3 x4 all the way to 27 so there's 27 variables and I label them as x1 to 27 these these are uh, correspond to here so the x1 in this case corresponds to here x2 corresponds to this x3 corresponds to this and likewise here the x9 uh, goes to here this 25 so as you can see this one is just just pictured as the uh, this is the top square middle square and bottom square as if you just flip it rotate this around backwards like this rotate it made it flat, you'll see those are the x1, 2, 3, all the way to 27. And then so what I did, I wanted to try to solve them. Well, because we know the solution set from the matrix solver, here's x1 all the way to x25, is screenshot from that website. And these ones are free, meaning we can make them whatever we, we, we want, and then the other ones will update uh, to them. So here is the calculator uh, for this. So this is the uh, Tindry square, I'm gonna erase these to see it better so you have the uh, this is one of the, the Tindry uh, squares 15 like that and what I did was here these white ones are free these are the x14 uh, so x14 15 so x14 15 17 18 23 24 26 27 in other words these are free and then these are free as well and those ones are correspond to these parts so if I just write these 15 in here everything gets updated according to these calculations you can see the calculations inside I put so just simple linear algebra or advanced algebra so if we change this one for example anything you want you want to go 16 everything modifies these still add up to well 666 so this one is different but it's still a uh, similar to this one. So this is the exact one. So if you add 2015, 2015, 11, 643, 643, and then, oh, let's move this, 14, 626, 13, 18, that's over here. These are the free ones, and then everything else gets calculated. You have the 635, et cetera. And to show you in real time, I'll just go and do it for this one. So if I put this one, this one's a 3301 uh, cube. So let's just do that here. So this one is going to be, uh, this one's going to be 22. This is 3, 2, 6, 4. And then this above, we got to scroll up here, is the 3, 2, 7, 6. This one's going to be 23. This one's going to be 7. This one's going to be 12. So yeah, these uh, <laughs> so yeah, these still add up to six six six. I didn't change the custom uh, or the constant here, but here you can have negative numbers. So basically, you can have unlimited types of these cubes. So there's nothing about these eight special cubes, or whatever. Let's write this three three zero one. Yeah, so if you do three three uh, zero one, did I make? A, I think I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, yeah, I made. A, <laughs> I don't know why I made this mistake here. So this one is thirty two, not six four three. Thirty two. This one is three two five eight. And yeah, everything goes to 3301. Let's see if it's the exact same. So we have over here 925326, 8, 8, So yeah, we just replicated this. You could do this for every single one. You could do uh, everything the same if you want. Let's just go everything one. What I'm going to do is so if you want an actual perfect, but it's a trivial one, it's just everything is ones, what we end up getting is. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, it's unlimited. You can just have negative numbers. 
if you want to see this one, I think it's three. So yeah, this one is a perfect everything main cross sectional diagonals. Anywhere you uh, <laughs> move this around, you get perfect three. So this is a trivial uh, version of the perfect cube. Everything is just a one. They just add up to three, etc. So that's, there's the main cross sectional diagonals. So you could check if your work if it's right or not. So let's just go backwards and uh, going back to the thing. So there it is. Three two five eight. This one's a twenty one five three two seven five three two seven five five twenty one. So, so as you can see, there's nothing too special about it. Here I copied and pasted that graph for one of them. Let's make this a bit bigger. So as you can see, main cross-sectional diagonals are this. And even to show you, it's exactly the same thing going back here. So this one is this part here. So main cross-sectional diagonals, 3, 3, 8, 3, 2, 8, 9, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 8, 5. Let's see where that is, Tindry cubes. Where is this one? It's the thing is this one. Let's check back and forth. Whoops. Calculator. This is 383312. 33, 38, 3, Yeah, so those are the main cross sectional diagonals. That's this one here. Everything is the same. So yeah, we just replicated. There's nothing, there's nothing special. It took me actually, uh, it didn't take me too long to even make this uh, calculator. Just setting up the videos takes longer. So this is identical to the Tindry 137 cube and same goes for all other cubes too. In fact we can make an infinite number of these cubes. You can just play around with the, these free variables. So these are number free. You can make them whatever you want. Everything else is dependent on it. In fact we can make an infinite of it thus there is nothing particularly special about the cubes unless there's some sort of meaning specific with each of these uh, numbers in there. Uh, so note, uh, again, I'll make a note, I mentioned it earlier, that Tendry cubes, or the Tendry 1 through 7 pages, never claim to be magic cubes, but only reference to them as cubes. Only commentators on the Tendry 1 through 7 riddles claim they were magic, perfect, or unique. Tendry just said these are some cubes that are, can prove or aliens or whatnot. So I will check if there is anything special. Also, the another one is this Odin triple horn. Here's the, from page nine you get this other triple horn if you add these it probably that goes to six 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 add it this way it's six 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 uh i'll have to double check here's another one yeah ed from outer dark asked me to look into that i'll look in that uh after this video to see if there's anything special so now if you've gotten this far and you want to learn more about linear algebra so basically linear algebra i haven't done any videos particularly on it but i will do in later videos so subscribe and stay tuned if you want to learn more math. So linear algebra slash matrix solving. To illustrate a tiny bit of how I set up the matrix and calculate it, consider the following. The Tindry cubes require that 27 calculations adding three variables each for all, uh, all add up to magic constant. You can even see that here. As you can see here, these are the calculations. The only ones that were required. These ones don't, these aren't required because uh, these are just well, none of these add up to 3301. So these main cross-sectional uh, ones we can just ignore because it's not the same as a Tindry one. So these are the Tindry. We have three here. Three calculations, three. All the yellow ones are three. So this one is, uh, this is three, six, nine. So we have three, three, and then nine. This one is a three. And this is three. And this is three, three. Uh, so what we have, we can just add these up. So 3, 3, 3 is 9, plus 9, and you have these are 3. So these are, these are just 3 times uh, 9. <laughs> you can just add them up yourself. I, I don't know why I drew a bunch of lines. So there's just 27 calculations that are required. And again, it's excluding this main cross-sectional diagonals. And then when we do that, so what we have, and there's also, there are 27 different variables to solve. 9 per each square. And uh, yeah, so 9 per each square. So here I copied and pasted those. Uh, this is the top square x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. And this one, if you want to look in 3D, just rotate this like that and then uh, move this over here. Oops. Move it over here, you get a shape like this. And the x1 goes here x1, x2, x3, etc., x4, x5, x6 x7, x8, x9, and then do the same thing for these ones, and then you just get a 3D shape like that, where the squares are just in 3D. And now to give you a quick example of how do we get these in matrix form and what that means as well, if we look at this one for example, x1, 2, 3 uh, have to add up to, to 666, so we have x1 plus x2 plus x3, this equals to, well, 666. 
And likewise, another row x4 to x6 have to equal to 666. So x4 plus x5 plus x6 equals to 666. And in fact, this is the same thing as writing it as, well, you could write this as 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2. So I'll just write this as, um, yeah, right here. So same as 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 1 times x3. And we can include all these together. So plus 0 times x4 plus 0 times x5 plus 0 times x6 equals to 666, like that. So when we have that, and then the second equation, you can write this one as uh, 0 x1 plus 0 x2, because number 0 times anything just goes to 0. And this one's 0 x3, and then plus, now we have 1's here. So anytime there's actual coefficient that's 1, we just put it here. So 1 times x4, it's the same thing as writing x4. So 1 times x5, and then plus uh, 1 times x6 equals to 6. Six, six. So yeah, this one I should have moved it a bit closer. So yeah, here I just uh, quickly fixed that up, put it aligned together. So what we could do is, well, we could put this all into matrix form. So matrix form would be removing this x1, x2, x3, because it's just uh, uh, pretty tedious to write. So we could write this entire matrix as a 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and then we could put a line here to symbolize the equal sign. This equals to 666, 666, like that. And then this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And that's our matrix like that, and uh, et cetera. But now if you uh, want to just, uh, just think about having 27 calculations. So now scale up, yes, yeah, scale to, well, 27 times it by 28. And the reason there's the 28 is because of this uh, part right here, which is the equal sign. So there's 27 variables. We'll get all the way to x27, but then we have the equal sign, so we have a 28 on the row side. And there's 28 different calculations or equations, so we have 27 like that. Yeah, and now when you scale up, you get this giant uh, Excel file here. So scale here, and now we have this all the way to 27 calculations. There's our x123, and then you have zeros for everything else equals 666, x456, six, six, everything else, 0, 0. And this one here is our x2, x4, and x6, and, and x7. Let's see where those ones are. So x147, uh, so let's look at this. So 147, yeah, these are this one here. And as you can see, it's just a bit different. So you're going to have a 1 and then some blank zeros like that. And likewise, here you get a bunch of other stuff like that. I believe this one is the um, pillar. I'm, I'm going to have to guess it's a pillar. Yeah, I think this is a pillar. So this is jumping from x1 all the way to the second x10. This is the second um, uh, second square, and then all the way to x. This one is 19. So 1, 10, 19. Let's take a look. So we go 1, 10, 19. So yeah, in 3D, this will go across here. And then 19, like that, where 19 is here, 10 is here, and there's our x1. So yeah, that's our, our pillar. So as you can see, we can make a giant matrix. And then, and then basically, the online matrix solver I use uses a well-known methodology using that Gauss-Jordanian uh, uh, methodology to simplify the matrix table and thus solve the overall system of equations uh, in their simplest form, which when written in the basic form, we get this. And they didn't have the output. I don't want to make it myself. You could, you could move these around and write this similar to this, but in a more simplified uh, version that includes just uh, this number of calculations. So as you can see here, so we have x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, all the way to 25 variables right here. And these ones all, these depend on, well, these free variables. These, or I'll just write these. And I'll circle this and then put it over here. So these are free, x14, 15, 17, 18, and all the way to 23, 24, 26, 27. So yeah, based on the, the way it's set up, that's the only, one, only ones that are free. You change them, these are all dependent on these, etc. So yeah, that's just a quick crash course on, uh, on this matrix solver, which is pretty amazing. I think linear algebra, finding out how to do these matrix stuff is one of the coolest things. Uh, it's just one of the most advanced stuff. It was, it's simple, but you could take it to such a level where a lot of things, a lot of computer IT stuff uses it, etc. So anyway, that's all for today's video. Hopefully you'll learn, hopefully you'll learn about these magic cubes or these so-called Tindry magic cubes. They're, they're just cubes. So 
don't use that as some sort of uh, higher intelligence because I solve them pretty quickly. And you can make an unlimited amount of them. But yeah, but I believe there's some other stuff in the Tindri uh, 137 that's pretty interesting, especially their biblical references and their uh, uh, advanced calculations or the constants to uh, some other um, yeah, physics and science, etc. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at those, see what I can find. But yeah, so as for the cubes, there's nothing particularly special unless you can think of something about the numbers. Let me know, comment on those below. Anyways, thanks for watching. Like always, you can download these notes in the link below, as well as the Excel sheet, which includes the calculator and the matrix table and all the tinger cubes, etc. So check those out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.